when things aren't adding up in your life, start subtracting. That's a quote that I first heard 12 years ago when I was first getting into minimalism. And if you're new to minimalism and the benefits of owning less, I hope you're beginning to understand some of the wisdom in that quote. But I want to mention today that there's fascinating research recently published in Nature that makes a scientific argument for it and the importance of subtraction. That the quote is more than cute and fun to say, it's actually backed up to be true. The idea that our lives might benefit more from subtracting than adding is not a natural inclination that we have as human beings, but there's great opportunity in it. You can find the entire study backing up this claim linked in the description below, but let me summarize it for you. Based on the research, humans systematically default to searching for additive transformations and consequently overlook subtractive transformations when solving problems. The study investigated whether people are as likely to consider changes that subtract components from an object, idea, or situation as they are to consider changes that add new components. And, quote, Across eight experiments, participants were less likely to identify advantageous subtractive changes when the task did not cue them to consider subtraction. In other words, when given a problem to solve, humans are more likely to find a solution that adds components rather than subtracting. Like I said, it's fascinating. In one example, participants were given a Lego structure with an out-of-balance roof and they were asked to stabilize it. The simplest solution was to remove one brick from the corner, but most people chose to add additional bricks to the other corners in order to stabilize the roof. It was a more difficult solution, yet most respondents chose it because we are predisposed to look for additive solutions rather than subtractive ones. In fact, across eight different experiments, each time a majority of respondents, 90%, chose solutions that required additive transformations, even though subtractive transformations would have been simpler and more efficient. The researchers went on to explain why they believed this to be true, which you can find below in the description. But regardless of the cause or the causes, we would be wise to be aware of this ingrained tendency to consider additive solutions because it plays out in both daily and major decisions. But constantly adding components to our lives is not without cost. In fact, this tendency, left unchecked, results in debt, exhaustion, burnout, illness, addiction, and stress. Our lives are limited and cannot withstand constant addition. So when things aren't adding up in your life, start subtracting. Consider these nine areas where subtraction just might improve your life. Number one, possessions. Too often we think we can solve problems with a purchase, a bigger house, a new tool, more toys for the kids, or a new planner. But as I have discovered, oftentimes the most desired items in life, peace, joy, meaning, are found in owning less. Number two, habits. We're quick to add new habits to our daily ritual, especially when they become culturally popular or we hear about them for the first time. But oftentimes, the key to a more meaningful life can be found in removing unhealthy habits rather than adding new ones. Number three, diet. It seems new diet fads and formulas arise almost as frequently as the sun. But almost all of them, at least all those worth trying, follow the same formula. Remove sugar, processed foods, and overeating. Others remove dairy and carbs as well. If you're trying to lose weight, try the simplest route. Remove unhealthy foods rather than adding an entirely new regimen to your diet. Number four, at work. The tendency to overlook subtractive transformations shows up all the time at work. We see it constantly, adding new meetings and processes, committees, ideas, pursuing new products. Control what you can at work and look for efficiencies and solutions by subtracting processes rather than constantly adding them. 
Number five, in our finances. Having a hard time making ends meet? The default position for most people is, I just need to make more money. And in some scenarios, that might be true. But in other cases, dare I say most, the simplest and most practical solution to your money problem is to just spend less. Number six, relationships. I always walk a fine line here, as I've mentioned in other videos. I don't subscribe to thinking that says, remove every relationship from your life that doesn't serve you. There ought to be people in your life that you are serving without the expectation of being repaid for it. That being said, there are times when it is appropriate to walk away from a relationship rather than constantly looking for the next tool or process to fix it. Number seven, goals. Confucius is credited for saying it first. The man who chases two rabbits catches neither. If you want to become more successful in accomplishing goals in your life, limit the number that you are pursuing. By reducing the number of goals that you are striving to accomplish, you will improve your focus and your success rate. Number eight, social obligations. There is power in rest and solitude, and regularly withdrawing from the world allows us to refresh and rejuvenate so we can make a bigger difference in it. Too often I think we fall into the trap of thinking that we can make a bigger difference in the world by adding as many obligations and opportunities as possible, but rarely is that the case. And number nine, words. The words we use are powerful. Keeping them simple, honest, and truthful, and knowing when to keep quiet presents wonderful opportunity to use them best. Speak wisely in all circumstances. Fewer words is often better than many. Our natural tendency is to add, add, add things to our lives, but sometimes subtracting is the best and most efficient solution to the problems that we face. Start there.